The process of seeing paintings, or seeing anything else, is less spontaneous and natural than we tend to believe. A large part of seeing depends upon... No, we are not quoting ways of seeing in this video essay. Give John Berger a fucking break. The man was in World War II. Art criticism. What? What? How? Why? It seems hard, but it's actually very easy. You take a piece of art, a novel, a movie, a ham sandwich, whatever you like, and you start looking at the component pieces. How is it structured? Is it well lit? Do the characters evolve over the course of the story? What's the mouth feel like? Plug your scores into a rubric you made in Excel and do 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 do. Ooh, look, 97 out of 100. Well done, Chantel Ackerman. <laughs> Okay, yes, there, there's more to it than that. Uh, looking at the mechanics like this is a good first step, but it can only take you so far. It's one of my problems with a lot of film reviews I see on YouTube. Your understanding of cinema can't stop at Cambellian monomyth good, plot hole bad, but I've seen so many videos of reviewers combing over a film looking for inaccuracies, like they're prepping to play Bobby Fischer in the 1963 World Chess Tournament, and that just doesn't work because obviously, A novel isn't done when the author finishes writing it or when the editor sends it off to the printer. It's done when somebody reads it. Art is a collaboration between artist and audience. This is kind of obvious, but two people can look at the same thing and come away with totally different ideas. One person's heroic epic is another's soulless pandering, and one person's investigation of the human condition is another's pretentious snorefest, and neither person is necessarily wrong. Am I saying that everything is just as good as everything else and that it's all down to taste? That any reasons we provide for a piece's quality are just post hoc justifications of our own personal preferences? No, I don't think so. Just that art criticism is itself an art, which means that you can learn a lot to improve, but there's no hard rule on how to do it. Rembrandt's work is incredible because of his use of chiaroscuro, but that doesn't mean Pollock is bad because his paintings don't have shadows. Here's how I try to do art criticism. I find a piece of art that makes my brain buzz. The movie House, the album 69 Love Songs, Orange and Red on Red, all of these make my brain vibrate in my skull like a washing machine filled with ball bearings. Then I work backwards from there. Why do I like it? For instance, what's the context around it? Nobuhiko Obayashi lost all of his childhood friends to the Hiroshima bombing and consulted his 10-year-old daughter on the script for House. Watching the movie just knowing those two things changes the experience entirely. Does the subject matter speak to me? Is there a lack or lot of technical skill on display? Stephen Merritt has this beautiful deep singing voice and interesting lyrical style. 69 Love Songs is uh, exactly what it sounds like, it's 69 Love Songs, and it really transports me to those moments in my life that were affected by love. Is there something I can't put into words? I don't know that I could make a convincing argument for Rothko without just deferring to what other people have said about him, but standing in front of his paintings in the Carnegie Museum of Art, they just felt so big, like I was going to be swallowed up. So that's how, now why, why bother? Am I just trying to validate my English and philosophy degrees? Yeah, absolutely, that's exactly what I am trying to do. Uh, Am I hoping to become a better artist myself? Yes. Yes also to that. Uh, is it that art is the greatest joy afforded to humankind and to interact with it is a sublime pleasure? No, prob it's mostly the thing about my English and philosophy degrees. I'm so fucking cute, bitch. Booty like Kylie, but shouty time.